Okay, guys, I'm recording this. This thing. <laughs> so now I've heard your opinions and I have ignored them. Okay, so guys, I'm going to start with um, the first machine. I'm on uh, Linux Server One. Yeah, guys, and I don't keep I don't care if you keep up with me today. What's more important is you just focus on what I'm doing. You understand what I'm doing. If you have questions, now's the time to ask. Okay, do I have any typos? No. And again, guys, this is not um, a return. I haven't hit return to just word wrap. So I'm creating a new connection. Now I'm looking at all my connections. Sorry. Connection show. I'm going to get rid of that wire connection. Guys, if you don't uh, have a wire connection, you don't need to delete it. So just don't, don't run the command based on what I'm running. Look at your connections and verify that you, you know, look at them and verify you have this connection. You don't need to delete it if you don't have it. Uh, just for the purpose of the video, I don't really need to do this at this time because it's already up. I'm going to do connection up ETH zero. It was already up for me. Host name control set host name Guys, I'm going to do this. I'm also going to resolve it to www.contosa.com on this machine. Again, that's word wrap. And do the same thing for the IPv6 loopback. I'm going to throw in another tab. Okay, I'm not going to stop now on the review. Um, because you have a typo on the previous line where where you said uh, I in the interface name right here is where you had your typo. Okay. 
So delete the old ETA zero that you've created, and MCLI con uh, connection Dell ETA zero. Then go back in your history. For the purpose of the video, I'm making the screen big. Sorry. Okay. Can, but the script needs to be a bash script. The other script that I was showing you was PowerShell. No, 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 right, correct. So you have to get it in side of the VM. How do you do that? So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to Google it. So I'm going to reboot this machine. Remember, guys, you can always do notes after the fact. Listen, uh, Emilio, I fixed your foreign language credit, and I noticed you're only taking two classes. Yeah. Is that by default? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, if you can take two more one this one semester, you'll cut a full semester off. Right. Um, so send me an email about that, and I'll tell you which two. They're full right now, but there's a, still a chance you can get in. All right, cool. Thank you. What's the command to install software? Yum install HTTPD. If, if I'm prompted for any questions, answer yes. Guys, last time I used the echo command, I'm just going to use VI, whatever you want to use. Uh, I, I did the re re redirect in and out. Remember, I, I, I said uh, cat and I redirected input and I did the title and all that.
Can you do like Guys, how do I exit? Press escape. What do you What do you press here? Z -Z. Uppercase Z Z or colon Z -Z. W, -Q. W, -Q. W Q. Did I not sign in as root? Let me see why I can't do this. I'm going to copy this so I don't have to retype it. I got to exit out and find out why I can't do this. Uh, touch bar. Oh, I did HTTP. Sorry, guys. Not. I know. I was thinking HTTP because we're about to type some code. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. Hit insert. And since I copied it, I can paste it. But before you can paste, you've got to go in insert mode. The reason why it wouldn't allow me to save it was I didn't have an HTTP folder. So I couldn't save it in a folder that didn't exist. How do I make, do you want to come back, go back? Anyone? Uh, yes, please. How do I start, uh, how do I set a service to start and boot? What command? System control. Guys, and keep keep in mind that you can always look up HTML code. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Okay, system control enable HTTPD. System start HTTPD. Firewall CMD list all okay I'm gonna hit enter Going to make some command scroll off the screen. 
So, I currently do not have HTTP um, opened in my firewall. I am using the public profile. Guys, in a real production system, this needs to be fixed. Uh, there's issues with the default, but it's too permissive. So firewall, CMD, um, zone e equals, do I put an equal sign? Uh, okay, we'll try this. Add service equals HEVD. Yes. Sorry, not HTTP. HTTP. Yeah. Guys, there's a command I can remember what it is. There's a switch that I can make it permanent and automatically reload in one command. I don't know what the command is. There's a certain switch to do that. Um, I'm just going to do it in two steps. Firewall, CMD, reload. By typing permanent here, I'm saying update the config file. By reloading it, I'm saying <coughs> reread the config file into memory. Because until you re reload it, those settings won't take effect until you reboot. So I'm going to list all and verify HTTP is there. Just going to show my history so far. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is you can do a, a wget and test your website. I just downloaded the website with this command. wget is webget. What was the other command I used? Yeah. No, to, to grab a URL. Instead of doing that, which I download the file, I can do this to just redirect it to my screen. Yeah. Carl. Command line URL. Um, guys, remember, when I edited my host file, I had an entry for www, so that resolves to my loopback address. So I'm going to go over to server 2. CLI connection add connection name is ETH zero type is Ethernet IP four is one seventy two sixteen zero dot three slash sixteen the gateway is one seventy two sixteen zero dot one the type is Ethernet the IPv4 dot DNS is 10.13.25 comma 10.13 uh, and auto connect is yes. Oh, I put um, 
this twice. The interface name is ETH0. I put type twice. I put it here, then here. The second time it should have been interface name. Um, set hostname control, set hostname cs01vm2.contoso.com, echo extended expressions. CS01 VM2.contoso.com CS01 VM2. So I'm going to resolve the short name and the long name to the loopback. And do the same thing for the IPv6 loopback with an extra tab. Then I'm just, because I don't control the DNS server, I'm going to do an entry for the web server. <clears throat> 0 Then reboot. It's In this case right here, it's just some sort of name, part of my naming convention. Computer station one, the second virtual machine. So the first physical machine, second virtual machine on that physical machine. CS stands for computer station where VM stands for virtual machine. It's part of a naming convention. So when you go home and you try that. You can name it whatever you want. Sam, Sally, Bill. Doesn't matter what name you give it. If you look on the front of your computer, there is a yellow sticker. That's our inventory sticker. That's called an asset tag. And a lot of companies, their naming convention says name the computer based on their inventory number, their asset tag. Don't do this now because it's inappropriate, but Go watch the website is down. It's one of the very first viral videos there was. It's hilarious. And they talk about the naming conventions. It's like a, a guy at the help desk getting a call from employees and getting frustrated with them.
Okay, I'm going to reboot. Yes, no? Recording. Yeah. How do we get to those when we get home, the, the recording? Uh, YouTube, Brian F21. And it takes like an hour to get processed. Right enough, 81. 21. 21. First, the 21st Brian F. I do not masquerade as a 21 year old female on the, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so if I get one of those, what are you wearing? I go, yeah, this guy's really misinterpreting the name. <laughs> okay. I got that name from AOL back in the day. Does anyone re remember AOL being a Mac only service? I, I was the beta uh, tester for when they brought it over to PCs. And I was, when they gave me, generated my name, I was the 21st Brian F on AOL. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna do. Guys, I hit SSH hyphen tab tab. Look at all the commands. I'm going to do key gen. SSH key gen. I'm on um, server one. I'm not making any changes. SSH key gen and hit enter. All the way through. I'm going to generate a public and private key for my user account called root. If you have four user accounts, you will need to create keys for all four user accounts. Again, I'm on server one. Okay, so now I'm going to SSH. Guys, I can't remember the command. Copy ID. I'm going to copy my key. I'm not going to hit enter so people can see it. To CS01 VM2. Guys, for if you want to know that, if you want to connect to the, the user by the short name, the long name, and the IP, you have to copy it three times, okay? Because I would have to get that search, uh, I have to get the certificate and associate it with all three names. So right now I'm just using the short name. SSH hyphen copy hyphen ID space root at the short name. CS01 hyphen VM2 then press enter. Do you want me to come back there? Um, okay. Uh, oh. Guys, I can't resolve that name to an IP. So echo 172.16.0.3 tab CS01 vm2.contoso.com space cs01 vm2 I'm going to put that in my Etsy host file I'm going to hit enter, then try the SSH command again. 
Yes, copy the server key. Sign in once. I did this command again. Because now I can resolve that name CS01 VM2 to an IP locally. Again, because we don't control the DNS server. Now I'm going to test to see if I if it prompts me for a password. And it doesn't. So I was able to connect, no password. Now if I look at my command prompt, I can see I'm connected to VM2. Yeah. I was trying to do this at home normally, uh, like on a special fedora, and it wouldn't, it doesn't let you use this on the root login over SSH by default. You can't log in as root usually. Right. Look. VI. Uh, SSH config. Uh, yeah. SSH versus SSH D. So on the server you want to connect to, you have to configure the SSH D, the yeah. daemon, and then do a look, a slash root. And you're going to look for a, perm, a permit line. Uh, I'm just going to hit slash root. Uh, actually, let me try to look for a permit. Um, permit. Uh, let me search for an uppercase root. Right. No, no, that's not quite what we want. Right here. Yeah. Change to yes. What do you need to do after you change it? System control, stop SSH or restart space SSHD to reread the config. There's also a, a reload command in, in system config. Okay. Um, so I'm now I'm connected to uh, VM2. But you can do those keys with another user and then once you're there, SSH is root, but on server you're allowed to do that. Okay, the only thing left we have to do is create some partitions. <coughs> I'm gonna show I'm gonna show my history, okay? What, what do you want to see? The history on VM1 or VM2? So I'm going to exit VM2 and then see my history. Created my key, tried to copy the key over, it failed because I couldn't resolve that name to an IP. I fixed that issue by adding an entry for that name in my Etsy host file. Then I tried again, it copied it, and then I tested it by connecting. So now, guys, all, all I'm going to do is create some partitions. Just to show you the server, uh, Linux Server 2 is the one that has the extra hard disk. So I'm going to SSH. What is this doing? Bang S. It's going to run the last command that starts with S, which is SSH. The second disk, the first disk is being used by the OS. The second disk is dev sdb, third disk is dev sdc, <coughs> and so on. So I'm going to make a traditional Linux partition using dev sdb. I'm going to show you the command, then I'm going to show you a shorter way. fdisk, dev sdb.
okay? I'm not going to press M for help or M for the menu. I type FDS dev SDB. I want to create a new partition. So I type N. I'm going to write this down up here. And once I'm, I'm going in, I hit N for new partition. Then I ask primary or extended? Primary. So this is this was initialized as a GP as an MBR. It asks for the partition number defaults to one. So I'm just going to hit the enter key. It wants to know the first sector. It defaults to 2048, which is the first free sector. So I'm just going to hit enter again. Then it asks for the last sector, which is the last sector on that disk. Uh, again, I'm just going to hit the default. I'm going to use the entire disk for this partition. And then W quits it and saves your work. Q just quits, doesn't save anything. So what we want to type is a W. I want to show you something easier. I'm just going to quit and not save it. F disk. Um, I can redirect into FDisk. Instead of actually going in, I can just say everything between EOF and EOF send into FDisk, which is N, P, three enter keys, W, jump out. I'm done. It, say, it created the partition. Yeah, but you got to be like, you got to work with that every day in order for it to know what it's asking next. So, you know what I mean? You got to be like really experienced to use that. <laughs> This command hasn't changed in my lifetime. Right, right. FDisk is one of those commands that were from the early 70 days. We used to have this command in... It's, 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 the uh, same thing. it's the same thing. Yeah. We used to have this command uh, inside of uh, Windows. Yeah, yeah, I've used that. Yeah. Okay, so guys, it's an easier way. If you want to go in there, press M for menu, look at all the things. I know I'm using a full disk. On the day of the test, this will work. I'm, I'm going to ask you to use a full disk. Guys, we need to reread the partition table. Partition Pro, Part Pro. I'm going to format that partition. Remember, DevSCB is the disk, DevSCB1 is the partition. I'm going to give it a label. I'm going to create a mount point. Partition table, format the hard disk, give it a label, and um, make the directory. And you guys wanted the recording. <laughs> Write down the logical steps. Remember the logical steps. Create the partition. Um, Reread the partition. Make the file system.
<laughs> we are going to. No, trust me. It's it's thirty commands. If you practice them, you'll remember them. It's it won't be hard. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to edit the file system table. Okay, you want me to go in? I want to go to the bottom. The mount point is dev, I mean the device is dev sdb1. The mount point is mnt data. It is XFS defaults zero space zero. You can also get the UUID of a device and mount by UUID if you want it. So I'm going to press escape, save it. If you have a typo in this file, your machine will not boot. So you're going to test it before you try rebooting. I'm going to exit it. I'm going to do mount MNT data. All the missing information. The, mount, um, the device, the file system, all that. It will read from the FS tab. If it, can, if it was successful in reading, you won't get any errors. And so I can see right now that it mounted it no problem. So it was able to read the FS tab. df dash h grep for data or I can do mount grep for data. Either will work. That's just a verified mount. Not necessary. If I didn't get any errors from here, I would have moved on. Now we're going to do an LVM partition, and the test is done. PV, create, I'm going to add my three remaining disks, dev SDC, dev SDD, and dev SDE. So I've, I've added my physical volumes to the, the LVM system. So I'm going to create a volume group. I'm going to make like a one hard disk out of all those disks. VG create, I'm going to call it VG volume group underscore public. And I'm going to add those three disks to this volume group. SDC, dev SDD, dev SDE. Listen, guys, and you can also practice in the lab. If you get a few people together, we have this, you can run the same thing in the lab. Okay. VG display. I believe it's volume group. I can't remember this command. I'm going to show my history. Guys, this volume group, that's how, my, how, how big it is. I'm going, to, I'm going to show my history again. Give me one second. Added the three disks to LVM. Then added then created a new volume group called VG underscore public and added those three disks to it, then looked at it. 
So now I'm going to do create a logical volume. LV create length will be four, just to keep it uh, within the size of that disk. The uh, name is going to be uh, LV public, and it's going to be made from volume group public. Here's the device driver for that new volume we just created. It's called VG underscore public hyphen LV underscore public. So again, make FS. We're going to format it. Guys, if you want to make your life easy, copy this. So I format it. I'm going to make a amount point, make the MNT public. If we don't add an FS tab, we'll have to manually mount it every time the machine reboots. So I'm going to hit enter, go to the bottom, hit O. I'm going to hit uh, paste because it's already, I copied it. I've been doing this class for years and years and years. Trust me, you guys will do fine. Uh, necessity will inspire you. <laughs> yeah. You, you guys will meet the challenge. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, within an hour. Because the way it just breaks it down into the different resolutions. So I'm going to press escape. I'm going to wait till you're done typing. OK. Test mount it. Mount MNT public. If you want, you can do a DFS, DF human, uh, and grep for, guys, what is this going to do? Public. data what is that that right there do? or I want to see any line with public or data why do I have to enclose it in quotes because if it sees that pipe it might think it's another command but when I put it something in single quotes, it perceives it as absolute. So I don't want it to look for public a pipe character than data, so I need to escape that character to make it be read as an actual pipe. It's an interesting line if you want to look for two items using grep. Okay, that's the test, guys. It's not that bad, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did you say? Let's do it right now. Okay. I am going to stop.